Barakatay Yahawa, Ba'ashem Yahawa Shai, Ba'ashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is Because the Cry of Sodom and Gomorrah was Great. And uh, pretty much this comes uh, through the inspiration of the book of Genesis the 18th and the 19th chapter and um, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning and they were also written for examples of wickedness you know and the penalty for wickedness uh, so Lord's will in this lesson we can get into some of that and correlate it with you know, America, which is Babylon the Great, who is following in the same footsteps as ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, when we start off in the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter, and we go to the 16th verse, the 18th chapter from the beginning starts when Yahushai and the angels came. Uh, um, Abraham saw them and he asked them to come in to his home. <clears throat> he made them food to eat, gave them drink. And uh, eventually, what happened was that the Yahushai and the angels were on a mission. And, you know, they stopped through. And Abraham saw them, and that was the manner back then. You saw, you know, a stranger. You know, you would invite them into your home, protect them, you know, feed them, clothe them, or not so much as clothe them, uh, unless they needed it, and uh, put them up. So Genesis eighteen sixteen it says, and the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way, because it was the next day. <clears throat> And they looked towards Sodom. Why? Because that was the direction that they were heading to. Because these two angels, these two men, which were two angels, they were on a mission to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for the lifestyles that they held. And the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Which we know what that means. That's talking about the Israelites. And eventually all nations will be blessed. Because all nations are going to have to come to us. To receive the law, statutes, and commandments. You know. The only nation that's not going to be blessed is the nation of Esau. Or the, or the nation of Edom. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do, to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. And the Lord said, and this is where I get the title from, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. So what does the Lord mean by the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great? Meaning that all of the things that are being done, you know, the actions of the people that are being done, are coming up into the ears of the Lord. Now how is this done? Well, it's done by way of the angels. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 20. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air, which are the angels, shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. So the angels are, the, the scriptures speak about, let's go to Proverbs 15 and 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So what are the eyes of the Lord? The angels. So the angels are everywhere reporting to the Heavenly Father all manner of things that are going on in the earth. And they're seeing the total and utter corruption of America that's supposed to be a so-called God-fearing nation. That's supposed to be exalting the Heavenly Father, so they say. That are supposed to be exalting the... The so-called Christian tenets, you know, and supposed to be the beacon of examples to the world. And they're doing nothing but wicked acts. 
And and um, not only are they doing wicked acts, they're also emboldening people, you know, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not only are they emboldening people, but they're um, causing them, for lack of better words, to do the same exact things. So, the Lord is just about at the point to destroy this place, but His law, statutes, and commandments cannot be broken. His word cannot be broken. So the Lord is about to bring a judgment because the very book they hold up to be the book of this nation is the very same book that they break. You know? Everything that's in the law, they break. They go against. And there's many, many, many the water brother influence, the water brother, the brother by Hashem. Yeah, they're influencing these other nations to do this, the water brother. That's the word I was looking for. All right, so now let's go back to Genesis 18 and 20. It says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, and the sin being very grievous, because these things that, are, that you see happening are, like, like the scriptures say, they're totally against the Heavenly Father. That's what the scriptures speak about, them having names of blasphemy. You know, and they blaspheme the Most High's name, you know, and, and those that are in heaven. You know, because they're, by, by the actions that they're taking, they're doing the total exact opposite of what they told the world that they were supposed to be doing. So it says, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. So that's why the angels went down there. Not that the Heavenly Father needed to do this, but you have to understand, the Mosai does things dramatically. The word God in the Greek is theos. The word theos comes from the word theater. You know? Which theaters are what? Where plays and, and things of that nature take place. So the Lord, you know, He's very dramatic. It says, And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord because Yahweh Shai was there. He was a the main representative of Yahweh. So Yahweh Shai was there speaking to Abraham while the other two men, which were angels, went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is where, you know, um, Abraham pleaded, you know, if there be 50 righteous or 40 righteous or 10 righteous, because he wasn't really praying for those Sodomites and you know and people of Gomorrah and all that he was really praying for the his his um he was really praying for his son Lot, which was really his uh, nephew, his nephew Lot, which is his brother's son. He was really praying for him, you know, but he knew that that place was so wicked that he was trying to buy you know, trying to de deliver his um his nephew Lot. Alright, so now let's go into the nineteenth chapter. Oh, before we go to the 19th chapter, let's go to the book of Jonah. Because remember, we read that the cry, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. So let's go to Jonah real quick. The first chapter, in the second verse, it says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And what happened eventually? Eventually, even though at this time they weren't destroyed, but eventually Nineveh was destroyed. You see? So this is this is uh, um, that's why we say that Nineveh and and uh, and other like Basra and Edom and things of that nature or names those type of names also apply to America today spiritually because they are doing all of the same things that got all of these other nations destroyed. So what makes America so great? See, except the only thing that's great about them is Babylon the Great, you know, and they're they're great. Wickedness that they've committed and caused to nations of the world to commit. So Genesis 19 and 1. It's, it says, uh, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing the men, Lot seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the, earth, toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. 
And why did he say this? Because he knew that, that the freaks come out at night. You know, the freaks come out at night. You know, that Houdini song. So he knew that. So he was trying to bid them to come into his home because he thought they were just regular men. You know, and he saw that, you know, that they weren't of that fashion. You know, they wasn't flamboyant. You no, know, they didn't have no lipstick on. They didn't have wigs on. They didn't have women's clothing on. You know, they wasn't sashaying. When they walked, they weren't slurring their words. You know, they weren't throwing two snaps up with a finger. You know, none of that bullshit. So he, he was urging them to come into his home. And he pressed upon them greatly. Come on, y'all got to come into my house. You know, you can't stay out here, you know. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, around, Salakia, both old and young. These are old moles and young moles. And you see that today. You got old ass moles in, in Babylon the Great. You got young moles in Babylon the Great. You know, you got flaming, you got dudes out there with, with, with gray hair, you know, well, they probably won't even let their hair get gray because they're, you know, a lot of them are metrosexuals, you know, but you can see that they're older and they still, you know, you know, that, in that, in that flamboyancy, you know, limp wrist. It says both old and young, all the people from every quarter. So everybody came to that, to our Lot's house. All of these inhabitants, all of these men, both old and young, came to this house. For what purpose? And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men, you could just imagine how they said it, which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. What do they, what do they mean by know them? Meaning to have sex with them. Now we know that the law is uh, strictly against two men having sex together or two women having sex together. You know? And it, give, and it gives you the penalty for what happens for that. So these men were saying that they wanted to have sex with those two men. You know? Unbeknownst to them that these were two angels. And Lot went out at the door unto them and, and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Man, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do, you, do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. What? For protection. And this is an ancient custom in the ancient, you know, in the ancient world. When someone came under your, home, under your roof, it was your responsibility to take care of them, their safety, their, their food, their lodging, everything. And, and nothing was supposed to happen to them until they left. When they left, then they were on their own. But while they were under your roof, they, you were supposed to protect them. And... A good movie that brought that out was a movie Lone Survivor because, you know, um, unbeknownst to many out there, a lot of those uh, Afghan Afghanis are really Jakes. You know, a lot of, you have a lot of Israelites among the Afghan, you know, the people of Af Afghanistan. And the movie Lone Survivor, the character that Mark Wahlberg played, you know, towards the middle of the movie when he got away from, from the, uh, from the uh, rebel fighters or whatever they were called, he came into a village. And the village that he came to, the head of the village took him in and protected him so much that he had that he fought against, you know, his countrymen to protect this man that was under his roof. And he protected him, you know, with his life. A lot, you know, because some of the men of his village died, you know, uh, um, uh, fighting against their their brothers. You know. So that was an ancient custom. It says, and they said, stand back. And they said, uh, and they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn. And this word sojourn goes into the word gar or gawar, which is the word stranger. Sometimes when you see the word stranger, it's the same word as sojourn. Because you had Israelites that were strange to certain lands in Israel that were considered to be strangers or sojourners. And you were supposed to give them the same respect and the same honor and the same treatment as you would anyone that was born in the land. And this is where the ignorance comes of these Christians. You know, that they don't understand that. Neither do they want to understand that. Because they're, that their conscience is seared with a hot iron, you know, as far as that plantation Christianity is concerned. 
and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? So in other words, they were saying that we're gonna we're gonna deal with them, but after we finish with them, we're gonna come for you. You know? Squirrel master ain't gonna be there for you all the time. You know, come for you, come for your fruit. Fruit cocktail. You know, I mean it's um you know, it's an inside joke it's from this movie, Half Baked. It says, and they pressed sore upon the man, even lot, and came near to break the door. So these were some zealous moles. I mean, these dudes were inflamed with, with, with trying to get to these two men that they thought were men, which were angels, to have sex with them. This is, this is the, the, this is the, the uh, depravity, you know? And this is going on here in America. Babylon the Great. It says, But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness because they had spiritual power. So they made them blind, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So they couldn't find the door because the angels smote them with blindness. It says, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou there any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord so the, the they kept on <coughs> doing this wickedness after you know time after time day after day week after week month after month year after year and nothing would happen to them, you know, so they just kept going on and on and on and on and on and on and on until the cutoff date. Once the cutoff date came, that's when the judgment came. And just because you don't see things happening, you know, as far as the, the real super judgments coming on these devils, don't think that, ain't, that they ain't coming. They're going to come. It, they will eventually come because the Lord's judgment is not going to linger. Uh, let's see something. I believe that's going into something else, but yep, this is going into them false prophets that their judgment of a long time lingereth not. But the judgment of of Esau and these nations and and two thirds of Israel here in America is not going to linger. So we go to Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. It says, "Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily." Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. But keep, keep in mind that those sins keep stacking up. And once sin stacks up, they turn into iniquity. They turn into transgressions. They turn it, and then that's, that's an overabundance of iniquities. That's why it says, you know, to not, um, I forget the, how the scripture goes in the Apocrypha, not to add sin unto sin, you know, because there's a punishment for, the, for breaking of the law. So these devils are, are, are in, here in, in America, Babylon the Great, are, are doing the same exact thing. And, they, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. It says, for, he, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. You know, and this place is going to be destroyed also, Babylon the Great. By what? By violence. What does that violence consist of? It consists of the missiles, uh, the nuclear missiles, and the lasers from the chariots, and many other calamities that are going to befall this place, you know, prior to these things happening. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Yeah, because they were, they were scoffers. So look at these two, two dickheads as scoffers, you know, today, you know, we're telling them the, you know, the severity of what's happening and, you know, and to, and to leave their wicked ways and come to the Lord, but they ain't listening. They're scoffing. So they said, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. They thought he was joking. So they were scoffing him. So it says, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of of the city. Uh, so lock it one minute. I gotta, I gotta check the oven. So lock it.
Okay, it's a locket for that. I'm gonna have to check it one more again. So it says, least they be consumed in the iniquity of the city. So if you didn't leave, anyone that was caught there was gonna be what? Destroyed. They were gonna be, they were gonna be uh, fire food. And these times, missile food. It says, and while he lingered, see, because he was lollygagging. Lot was lollygagging. You know? In other words, he just, be, you know, he was just like, like he knew he had to leave, but he was kind of like, you know, taking his sweet time. The men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. Because remember, you know, Lot, really Lot and his two daughters were really representation in this, in, in this uh, area of the elect because his wife didn't make it. It says, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. So they hastened them out of the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them uh, forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So how did they escape? They escaped on foot. But in this time, when the missiles are coming in to destroy this place, there's no way to escape uh, on foot or plane or car or anything like that. So what is going to be the escape plan here? It's going to be into the chariots. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go with the bullshit. Here we go with the bullshit. Satan's always on the prowl. But that's alright. We're moving on. Alright, so where were we going? Isaiah. 26. And 20. It says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. What are the chambers? The chariots. And shut thy doors about thee. Because this will, the chariots are going to be the new ark. And who shut the doors on the ark? The Lord did. So when the, the elect go up into the chariots, the Lord is going to shut the doors about them. In other words, they're going to be preserved. They're going to be protected. There's gonna, they're going to be in a place where no, no harm can come to them. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. Because it's only going to take the Lord an hour to destroy this place. Until the indignation be overpassed. What is the indignation? The Most High's fury. His anger. You know? Let's go to Psalm 75 and 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. And the wine is red. It is full of mixture. And he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof... All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. See? So the Lord's indignation is what? That fierce wrath, that fierce anger, that fire from those missiles. They're going to have the anger of the Lord in them. And this is how he's going to cleanse this place. So going back to Genesis 19 and 18. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now, because they told him to go into the mountain, escape to the mountain. But he was thinking, no, nah, I don't want to go to the mountain because... We might be destroyed by wild beasts, you know. Ain't going to be nothing out there for us. So it says, Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and, now, and, thou, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast. Show unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. See? Some type of evil will take him, some type of bad time, because, you know, he didn't know what to expect. Up in the mountains. Because that was no man's land. It says, Behold, now this city is near to, to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. This was uh, Zoar. This was the smallest of the cities. But they were wicked also. It says, And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Hasty escape thither, see? So we're hastening the day. Let's go to real quick to Isaiah 51. And eventually all five of those cities were destroyed. And, you, and you're going to see that. Ex Isaiah 51, 14. Not in this particular chapter, but, you know, when you read other, other chapters in the, in the Bible, it tells you that all five cities were destroyed because eventually uh, Lot fled 
from Zohar and went to the mountain where, the, where he was told to go to in the first place. Isaiah 51, 14, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. This is us, the Israelites. We're, we're exiles, we're captive, and we're hastening to be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his head should be, uh, nor that his bread should fail. Yeah, so that we won't die in this pit, because this is a pit, and this pit is going to be where the lake of fire is going to be. And, and anywhere where the lake of fire is going to be, you don't want to be. You know, we don't want to be anywhere where the lake of fire wants to be. We want to be in the chariots, you know, of the Lord to be delivered. So going back, it says, hasty, to, uh, hasty escape thither, for I cannot do... This is the point right here. Hasty escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, woo, oh Lord. Let's go to Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, which is what? The destruction. You have actual angels that are, that are manipulating the minds of these different kings, you know, these different leaders around the world to get into different conflicts and push different things out, you know. But they're holding back the destruction. That's why the destruction hasn't come yet. It says that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So that the destruction doesn't come. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living power. What's the seal of the living power? The seal of the living power is the um, mark of the Most High. You know, the thing... That exempts one from judgment. In the Old Testament, uh, where the word mark is in Ezekiel 9 and 4, is the word thawah. The word thawah is an exemption from judgment. So it says, having the seal of the living power. So this angel has the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So this particular angel was the one going around sealing the elect. And <clears throat> what he told them, <clears throat> what he told these angels, this is what he told them, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. See, until they were sealed. Until that mark was put in them of the Most High. Right? So, the angel, well, matter of fact, I'm sorry, before we go there, let's go real quick to the previous chapter, Revelation 6 and 6. It says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The oil and the wine is a representation also of the elect. So the elect will be sealed and protected because that seal is the, the um, reservation. You know, it's that ticket out of here. All right, now the next precept I have is Job. I'm just going to go straight to the point. Job 5 and 19. It says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Why? Because we're in the six troubles. We're in the, at the, almost at the end of it. We're at, at the, at the, just about at the end of it. And by the time the six ends and the seventh begins, the elect have to be out of here. Because... The seventh is a representation of destruction. That's completion. That's it. Okay, that's it. The, the, that's the cutoff date for you devils. All right, so he, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. Because this place is going to be destroyed whether, some, whether somebody accepts it, believes it, or not. This place is out of here. There's no hope. We would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. Forsake her. Because they're, they're on the Most High's death list. They're on the Most High's scope. And he is about to take this place out. They're ripe for destruction. The, wick, the, the grapes of wickedness can't get any riper. They're just at that they're at their point where they're perfect for threshing. Now let's go from there to Psalms 91. I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Psalms 91 and 9. It says, because, oh, so like it. Let me, let me, um, let me check the oven again.
it could use about three more minutes. So, so back here. So, Psalms 91 and, one, and 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. So how is that? Because we're trusting in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. We're doing the best that we can. We're out there doing his work, doing his will, you know, doing the things that it please in terms to the best of our abilities. You know, it says, There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Why? Because the Lord is going to have his hedge there. It's an invisible force that you can't see, but it's there for protection. That's the seal, the part of the seal. It says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So the elect are protected. So that's why the Lord, the angel told the other angels, Look, don't hurt the earth or the sea or the trees until the servants of the Lord have been sealed in their foreheads. You know, so now let's go from there to Proverbs chapter 12 and uh, 21. It says, There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. See, and that's why when you go back in Psalms 91 and you read, it says, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold the reward of the wicked. And this is the reason the whole existence of Esau from his birth is to show the world wickedness and to show the world the payment for wickedness. Remember, the angel told uh, Ezra from the time when Jacob and Esau were born of him. J Jacob is the end. So from that point, the end of the world really started rolling. You know? To where we're, to where we're at right now, thousands of years later. So we're at the very tipping point of the end. So now let's go there to the Apocrypha, the book of Ecclesiasticus. <laughs> what happened? How come this ain't giving me? Now it's being fresh. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ecclesiastes 33. And we're just going to read the first verse. <laughs> it says, There shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord. But in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. That's why it says, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them. So going back to Genesis 19 and 23. Uh, three, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. See, because remember, this was dawn when they was when the angels were getting them going. It was early. It says, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So the Lord rained fire and brimstone, which was the equivalent of nuclear fire. The word is God. Gaparyath, Gaparyath or Gapar, brimstone of judgment of Yahweh's breath. Uh, let's see what it says for brimstone. <laughs> brimstone. You know, these devils are always doing some. Uh, brimstone, an archaic synonymous, syn syn uh, an archaic term synonymous with sulfur. See? Evokes the acid odor of sulfur dioxide given off the lightning strikes. Lightning was understood as divine uh, punishment by many ancient religions. The association of sulfur with divine retribution is common in the Bible. Yeah, because the Most High caused the, the um, elements to fuse together and caused fire to come down from heaven. Oh, how can that be? A, well, the Lord could do whatever the hell He wants to do. Who the fuck are you to question the Lord? You know? Here it is the most high created everything that you see on the earth, everything, but but you know, you you're gonna limit the Lord? He can't create fire in the heavens, he can't fuse elements together in the heaven and rain fire down upon this wicked city, Sodom and these wicked cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Alright, so let's go back. <laughs> so it goes on to say 
And he over, matter of fact, let me read that 24th verse again. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, see, plural, cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Uh, just bear with me a second. And, you know, if your brothers want to see, find that scripture, you can go to, uh, I believe it's either Jeremiah 50 or 51. And other, there's other scriptures where it speaks about that he destroyed all those cities. All right. Uh, Genesis nineteen twenty seven. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord and looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward the land of the plain and beheld. And lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And this is what's going to happen when America goes up in smoke. You know, but the only difference is, see, Abraham actually saw it from a distance. The only difference is people are not going to really see it from, most people are not going to see it from a distance, you know. Um, they're going to really see it through the satellites. Because anyone that's in, within, within that proximity, they're going to be destroyed, you know. So they're going to be able to see it from a distance, from, meaning from, uh, from uh, through the uh, satellites, through the internet, all right. And it came to pass, beautiful to water, brother, GMS Tezakia, Jeremiah, hold on, uh, Jeremiah 49, 18, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, see, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Yeah, and, and it's also in the, uh, the Apocrypha. I'm not sure exactly where in the Apocrypha, but it's also in the Apocrypha. But all right, uh, verse uh, 29, Genesis 19, 29. And it came to pass when the Mosai destroyed the cities of the plain that the Mosai remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when, the, when he over, overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt, see? Uh, and that's pretty much it, you know, that's, that's the ending of that. So now, the rest goes into, you know, what happened to Lot and his daughters. So now let's go from there to Revelation 18. We're going to read a couple of verses in Revelation 18. And uh, we're just about, about ready to wrap it up. Uh, Revelation 18 and 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having, the great, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is after the destruction. That's going to be all those, uh, those desert creatures and unclean animals, you know, coyotes or whatever the case may be. They're going to be inhabiting this place because no human will ever ha inhabit this place ever again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. And this is why it's going to be destroyed. Because they're pushing this madness upon the world. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth uh, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. See? So by everything that they have, they're, they're, they've been um, enriched. And they have to accept the so-called morals of this place otherwise they can't um, receive or reap the benefits and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues and this is speaking about going up into the chariots not getting a plane ticket and leaving out of here you know as that that demon from GOCC told his people 
You know, and, and you and this dude got all kinds of followers. It show that people are, are retarded. You know, they, they well, I'll just say let like this show that people are blind, because here it is. This dude made these people leave here, made them leave America, went to Egypt. Then he they took all the people's passports from Egypt. They left them stranded there, and then when when uh, that that whole unrest took place, he bounced and left them there. And you still got people that follow this guy. It's amazing. It's utterly amazing. It says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High has remembered her iniquities. Just like we read about um, Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities in the, uh, what verse was that? Just bear with me. Right, verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. And that's the same thing with America. Which in the 11th chapter, let's go to the 11th chapter real quick. <laughs> Revelation 11 and 8. It says, And their dead bodies, meaning the Israelites' dead bodies, meaning they're in their, in their dead state mentally, shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is America, which is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So it's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom was known for freakism, the freaks come out at night, and Egypt was known for what? Captivity, slavery. Where also our Lord was crucified, meaning the Lord Yahweh was crossed out in the image of that so-called white devil was put up. So Revelation 18, 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and the most has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. Because that's why this whole land is going to be destroyed. From east to west, from north to, north to south. <laughs> How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much tor torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall a place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord power who judgeth her. <coughs> That's right. And in the next chapter, they were lauding and praising the Most High for destroying this place. Because this place is wicked. Now when we go to the previous chapter, Revelation 17 and 5, it says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the greatest conglomeration of confusion, the mother of harlots, because you could worship anything you want here, and abominations of the earth, because you could do, you could change your sex, you could have sex with animals, you could have sex with uh, males, males and uh, males and females on females, you could have orgies, and you could have all kind of freak bullshit going on here, and it's accepted, and this is why the Lord is going to destroy this place. For their wickedness. Now let's go to Second Peter, chapter two, <laughs> and verse five. It says, "And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly." Because there were many ungodly things happening back then. The scriptures don't get specific, but you know all this stuff was going on. So what did the Lord do? He destroyed this place. He um. He, he uh, destroyed the old world by fire. I'm sorry, by water, Salakia. He destroyed the old world by water. You can read about that in the next chapter of 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow. So if he condemned them with an overthrow because of what they were doing, what do you think he's going to do to this place? That not only is this place wicked, but they're pushing that agenda upon the world through that cup. Making them an example or an example unto those who after should live ungodly. But in this country, they say, what? In God we trust. That's what they say. But they don't. Because if they did, they wouldn't be doing these, these, uh, 
these uh, debaucherous things. And delivered just like vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked because they, day after day, they would, that's all you heard in the streets, you know, was, was, was this filthiness that they, that they uh, were speaking about. And come the night when the freaks come out, you know, that's when they would perform these things. And I'm pretty sure during the day. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing. See, he saw and he heard. So that means that men with men were having sex in the streets. Women with women was having sex in the streets. They were probably having, not probably, they were having sex with animals in the streets, in the plain sight. Because there was no shame in their game. There was no such thing as in the closet back then. They just did whatever the hell they wanted to do. And look what brought, what it brought upon them. <laughs> Total and utter destru destruction. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing. And they're pushing that shit so hard, hard now that damn near every movie out, they got every movie out, every series, everything that you see on television, you know, the music and all that, it's all pushing that, that, that bullshit. So much so that they got something called Pride Month. And the scripture said that pride goeth before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. So it says, for, all, uh, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. See? With their unlawful deeds. And they were unlawful. And the last precept I have is Jude. The first chapter and the seventh verse which is only one chapter long. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, which is adultery, and going after strange flesh. See? They were going after, men were going after men, women were going after women, men and women were going after beasts. Pedophilia was back there. You know it was pedophilia back then. Orgies, all kind of crap. And going after strange flesh and are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Because we still read about that now. And that place burned for a long period of time because it was five cities that went up in smoke. When the when the uh, World Trade Center went down, that it was there was uh, uh, fire and smoke going up for a long period of time. So imagine five whole cities. You talking about three buildings? You talking about here? You talking about five whole cities being destroyed by fire? So that fire went up for a long period of time, and this is why Abraham was able to see that fire from a distance. So when this place goes down, that fire is going to burn for a very long time. You're talking about 5,000 square miles from, from east coast to west coast, from south to, uh, from south to north or north to south. And that's going to be a long... And you got to remember, it's not just the fire from the missiles and the fire from the uh, lasers. You got natural resources here. You have cars, you have people, you have all different types of things that fuel the fire. You have trees. You know, grass and all kind of stuff. That's going to be burning for a long period of time. You know? So, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, the Most High is coming to destroy this place. And I wasn't trying to rhyme. Let's see, let's read that again. And uh, Genesis 18 and 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous... I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to this, the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And eventually they were destroyed, just like eventually America will be destroyed. Babylon the Great. So with that, I pray that you brothers and your few sisters have been edified. And to the next time I say, Shalom. Huh?